hey, if this thing's working, I'm recording a video for Brooke, who uh, left a question on our Facebook group, Life in Twin Falls. I, of course, am Ron Jones, local realtor. You can find me at ronjones.me. I work for the Jeremy Orton Real Estate Group here in town. We're part of the Keller Williams Group. I built this uh, this group to share information about Twin Falls, and Brooke has come here to ask questions. So I'm going to answer them for you, and I'm going to do some screen sharing and link to some articles for you as well. The question is, uh, my husband has just recently gotten a job opportunity in Twin. I would love some insight on how Twin Falls is for families. My children are 10 and 7. Also, what are the best schools in and around the area? So first of all, thanks for stopping by, Brooke. Appreciate the question. The same questions we had when we moved here. My family, which is me and my wife and six girls, we moved here in 2015 from, from the Phoenix area uh, and had the exact same questions. Moved here for a job. And so, uh, of course, everybody's different. And everybody looks for different things. So what I'm going to share with you is what I found to be true to me and my family. And, uh, and then I'm going to link to some articles that I've written that are on our website that talk about the different things there is to do around here and kind of highlight some of the stuff. Because we actually have a lot of, I won't call it touristy things to do because we don't have a lot of people here. Um, but there are things that you go do kind of like you would if you were on vacation. It's sightseeing. It's just a lot of it around here, which is really great. So um, to start with how Twin Falls is for families. So what I was looking for when I moved here, um, and again, I moved for the job. So I, I wouldn't say I had a lot of, I had a choice on where to live, but I knew I was coming to the Twin Falls area. Um, what I was looking forward to was the ability to allow my kids to be more active in things. So where we came from, there wasn't as many sports. Um, it was getting cut out of the schools. When funding got got cut, the arts and the sports went away, especially for girls, because there was always money for boys football, but not always money for girls volleyball or cheer. So when I got my family here, one of the first things we did is we bought a little bit of land. We bought three acres, and um, I immediately got them in 4-H, which if you don't know, is a club um, – where they, it's, it's kind of like, you can kind of equate it's like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Most people know what that is. Um, but this is all about teaching you how to uh, do different things and manage different things like animals. So in, in other words, my kids um, raised pigs. So through 4-H, you, you go to like a weekly meeting. The kids go to a weekly meeting. They have a leader that teaches them things. So, so when my kids uh, raised pigs, through 4-H, they bought a pig for about $50. I built pig pens on the property, and for about five months, they raised them. And then they would take them to the fair and show them. And then at the end of the fair, they got to sell them at an auction. And the money that they made from the sale went back into the next time around with more pigs. And the, there's a lot of cool things about that. And I won't go too far off the deep end on 4-H. I'm a big proponent. You can read about it at 4-H.org. Um, but the organization teaches them how to take care of the pigs, teaches them all about the pig, the anatomy, how to show a pig, how to walk around with a pig, how to train a pig, <clears throat> basically everything there is to know about that animal. Um, and then when they go to the fair, the pig goes into a stall every day. They go there and clean it out in the morning at like 5 a.m. Stay, stay with the, the free access to the fair all week long because they have an animal there, which means they get to go hang out with their friends at the fair afterwards, you know, during the day. But um, then they show the pig, they win ribbons. And then the, the cool thing at the end in the auction is all the local companies get together and buy these animals. There's, there's cows and pigs and goats and sheep, just about everything. But companies buy them and buy them at a premium uh, because they are not only contributing to the 4-H organization, but it's a company write-off. So my kids, and this was a couple of years ago, but my kids' pigs were selling for like $1,000, $1,200, $1,500. So they were pocketing roughly a thousand dollars on the sale of a pig that they raised for for five months. So they would be able to go buy the next pig out of that money and put the rest away towards a car or college or whatever. Um, so 4-H is there to teach you. You can learn about any kind of animal. You can learn about any kind of, you know, uh, a bow and arrow, uh, crafting, sewing, uh, you name it. You can do it in 4-H. And and in I don't even think there were dues. I, I think it was free. I can't quite remember. I don't think there are dues. They may do fundraisers. Um, so we got our kids involved in 4-H. They raised chickens. They raised pigs. They raised guinea pigs. They raised hairless guinea pigs, which I don't recommend. Have you ever seen all those hairless cats? These are even uglier. 
So um, what else did we do? We got them in all kinds of sports. Sports are huge around here. Uh, and it's interesting because coming from the Phoenix market, you know, we just traveled around all the cities. Phoenix itself would have 100 schools and you travel around all those schools and play games there. Out here, it's a lot more sparsely populated, a lot less people. So you have to travel to games. So we get to see different parts of Southern Idaho during the touring of playing the game. So we travel out to Sugar City. We travel up to Idaho Falls. We travel uh, to Mountain Home. Uh, so, I mean, we go all over the place. Sometimes we even go into Wyoming, Montana, and uh, Utah for certain tournaments. So it not only gives the kids more exposure to uh, a different level of sportsmanship, because the kids they play against are in different locations all over the place, uh, different techniques are used and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great exposure for the kids in the sports. But there's also not just the school sports, but outside organizations have the sports as well. So I've got a daughter that's been playing basketball for seven years. She's a junior in high school. Uh, and she started playing around third grade and played with the same group of kids and is now in high school playing. And she's played for organizations outside of the school district, which allows her to travel to different states. And she's gotten a really good foundation on how to play basketball. And she's a junior in high school. Um, so lots of sports, uh, including for girls. Um, and then there's all the outdoor activities because we have the Snake River right here in, in the canyon, literally 10 minutes from me. Uh, down in there, you can go kayaking. There's zip lines. There's lots of rock climbing around here. I'll, I'll just link you to the articles that talk about all the different stuff there is to do around here. But there's a ton. This is an outdoor community. Um, people here would rather be outside than inside, and there's lots to do. Now that being said, we do get um, we do get some snow. It's nothing like northern or even eastern Idaho. This area is called the High Desert, which sounds kind of silly because you wouldn't think there's any desert. There's it's a lot of farming communities, so there's a lot of crops, and you see a lot of green crops around uh, because they've done a really good job of moving that water from the Snake River through irrigation canals and watering everything. But because we're the high desert, we don't get as much snow as the rest of the state does, but we do get some. So we always get a nice white Christmas. Sometimes we get it at Thanksgiving. Sometimes we don't. But we definitely get all four seasons, which is really nice. And we have skiing almost all the way around us. We have Magic Mountain in the South Mountains. 45 minutes away from Twin Falls. Uh, we have Pomerel to the north. We have Sun Valley an hour and a half to the north, which you may have heard of, uh, Sun Valley, Ketchum, Haley area. Um, so there's summer things to do. There's winter things to do. There's uh, all kinds of sports. There's all kinds of programs uh, like 4-H and FFA, if, you, if you're into the agricultural farming type thing. Um, and then schools. You could probably look that up online and just look at how everything's graded. Uh, when I moved here, I was told Kimberly and Filer were the way to go. But now that I've been here for about seven years, I can say there are other schools that are just as good. Um, there are some uh, charter schools that are good, like Xavier. There are uh, There's a lot of options there. So I would say where you would probably, you probably want to start is finding what area of town you want to live in because, you know, so so let's say Twins right in the middle. I'm in Filer, which is right off to the west, uh, which it takes me five minutes to get to Twin. And we're a town of 2,600. We have no stoplights. We have one grocery store. It's, it's perfect for me. So you got Filer on one side and you got Kimberly on the other side. And then you got Buell just past Filer. And you've got, you've got other, you got Jerome up here north of Twin Falls. You've got all these suburbs right around, or rural areas right around the, the town of Twin Falls that still have 10 minutes, 15 minutes to get to Costco and Walmart and Winco and shopping mall and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, you might want to focus on what part of town you want to live in. And, and one thing I offer as a realtor, I got to throw my plug in, right? One thing I offer is if you can't get here from wherever you're at, I'll send you listings to look at. And when you find one you like, I'll go video it for you and I'll put it here on this channel so that you can come see what it looks like. And then if you really like it, then you, you make the time to come down and take a look at it. But I'm happy to do video tours. I don't mind doing them at all. So I hope this has helped out. You might be able to hear my kitchen full of high schoolers. It's lunchtime, so I was nice enough to run and get them and bring them home. I got to run them back to the school now. So thanks for checking in. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And if anybody else has any more questions, or Brooke, if you have any more questions, put them in the comments section. Happy to answer them. 
Otherwise, you can find me at ronjones.me. Thanks for stopping by.